All right, so guys, we are in uh, Flame Frangeburg Cafe in the shopping center in Europa. Uh, and today I'm coming here to um, have a, an idea of what the clients want in, in terms of cameras. Hey guys, so today we're at Flame 400 in Mirabuka. <laughs> Stop laughing. Work out what we can do for this long time client and improve their... <laughs> hey guys, so today we're at Flame 400 in Mirabuka. A long time client of ours who was looking to get some more cameras installed to increase security and keep an eye on what's going on within their restaurant. So today me and Ross are down here to have a look at what we can do to help them out and improve their lives. So let's take a look through the job. <laughs> Makes me think. Alright guys, so for the first camera I'm just going to be popping it right above me here. Just to look perfectly in front of the entryway out to the main car park. In my hand, I've got it with me a snake or a strap tied to another one just for a bit of extra length. And I'm lucky enough to have a access panel behind me to hopefully make it nice and easy to get the snake over to Ross and then we can get the cable to him. So if you follow me, I'll take you through what I'm gonna do. So up here, Ross is over there. I'm just gonna try and send him this snake, hopefully straight away without a hitch. So now I've sent this snake over to um, Ross. Um, snakes are our best friend in the electrical industry. We use it to get up walls and across cavities just to move cables around and attach cables on easily to them. Without them, we'd be lost, I reckon. It'd be just so impossible to get across large distances without them, and they make our lives 10 times easier. All right, so now that we've got the snake over to Ross, over at the other end, I'm gonna attach on our Cat6 cable. This cable is ideal for network and camera usage to transport a fast and speedy connection. It's a perfectly shielded cable, so it maintains a good quality of connection even in the best and worst conditions. So I've got my electrical tape here and I'm just gonna tape that onto the end and then that's one of our cameras pretty much run already. Here we've got the Milwaukee Impact, our favourite day-to-day tool and favourite brand in the electrical industry. It's not sponsored, but hopefully one day maybe. But this is the best tool for everyday usage and basic screwing and easy to do things. So now that we've run the cable, Russ has given me a hand and we're just going to line up a final position for this camera. Make sure it's nice in line and looks good within the area it's in. So he's lined me up with the door. So about here, I've got my impact driver with a 20 mil spade bit, just to make a quick and easy hole. And then we can bring the cable over to here and fit, fit off the camera. These data jobs are some of my favorite personally. Love to, um, obviously with the cameras, you make people just feel so safe and especially just coming out of COVID lockdowns and whatnot over the last couple of years, people starting to travel they just want that extra feeling of safety when if they go away or if they are traveling away from the home. And it's just such a rewarding feeling to know that you can make that difference in somebody's life. I'm just using my phone to, as a little bit of a like inspection camera, I guess, because it's perfect, almost the perfect size to get into like small and tight holes. Put it on the video setting with the flashlight. And real helpful in seeing where stuff is in spots that you can't. Keep sending it in, Ross. 
Keep going, keep going. Just like that. Magic. Yeah, where do you reckon, Ross? I reckon just up there, because you'll see them in the camera here. So they can, uh, when they're working on the tool. Yeah, you can't, you can't block off the cash register. No. That'd be yeah. pretty good. Yeah, just above your just head. Just above there. my head? Yeah. We'll go here? No, uh, come forward a bit. Yep. There? Yeah, probably just go Yeah, there. that'll look pretty good. Yes. James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing up there? Catching cables on. It's taking far too long. Why am I waiting? Where's my third cable? Why rod? am I? Where's my third cable? Huh? Don't worry. I found it. I found it. It's all good, mate. Don't stress. Hurry up. Don't stress, Ross. Get rid of these old rubbish ones. <laughs> <laughs> So I just removed the old camera that they're getting rid of. The old outdated system, they just ran it really weirdly through the downlight. So I just took it out, unplugged it and put the downlight back up nice and easy. So we're gonna run the Cat 6 that I showed you before to a new camera back there. Make sure to capture everything, it'll be so much better. Probably ends up there. Oh, I see it. Yeah. yeah. Me and Ross have just been discussing where we put the cameras in this small and slightly annoying kitchen to work in. <laughs> <laughs> just cause, not so much because of um, the area, just had all the big appliances create such a um, block in terms of the visual that you can see. So you just have to look for a good and logical spot that doesn't have any major large objects in front of it. So you don't have any wasted space in your camera footage and that captures usually entry and exit points, as well as main, in this case, main areas of food contact and other things that the client is looking to view and make sure that employees are obviously following the correct instructions and regulations and not messing around on their phones and whatnot throughout the shift. So yeah, you just have to think about it logically and what you want to capture and what you would want to see if you were using the cameras yourself. <laughs> Kitchen dance, mate. <laughs> it's very important when you're running data cable in any situation not to kink it because the strands are so thin that they could snap very easily and you could reduce your uh, signal through the cable which will uh, cause a lot of interference. So it's always best to keep them nice and straight and loomed in nicely. take off a little bit of that outer sheath and then you have this plastic bit that I was talking about before which is integral and makes the Cat 6 such a much superior cable compared to its previous iterations. From that we don't actually need it now that we're fitting it off so you cut it back, get it a bit more flush than that, perfect and then you're left with just the coloured cores. By doing that you just untwist them from each other and I usually just get my thumb and straighten them out. It'll allow it to make it much easier for you to fit off the actual crimp because it has to go through nice and straight to work perfectly. So you just unravel each of those ones, straighten them out. Once I do that, I'll shorten them a little bit so they're nice and straight, and a bit shorter. And then I'll show you how to put them straight through the crimp. So these sorts of network cables are much easier for expansion nowadays compared to the old analog type of camera that used to use the coax cable or better known as TV cable. These just make for much easier and quicker um, transfer of data and they're obviously a plug and play situation so as soon as we plug it into the NVR, the recording device and set it up it'll be good to go. 
and it allows for easy expansion. So if this company wanted to, say, put in another couple more cameras, it's just a case of running more cable and popping them in the same way. So you see there, I just cut off the ends, you get a nice straight thing, nice straight cables in order, kind of straighten them out and give them a bit of a wiggle, and then straight through this crimp, straight through the other end like that, put into a bit of the blue, and there you are. So here I'm just prepping um, the 2.5 cable for some power to this NVR while um, Ross is just connecting it into the circuit so we can minimise the time that this restaurant has to go without power, we're just make, trying to make it real quick. So I'm just going to prepare this 413 and we're going to hook up the NVR to that to give it power while Ross does the junction up in the roof. From there we can start to set up the system, get it all configured and set up just as the client wants and then set it up on her phone as well. We use 2.5 stranded. Stranded's the superior type of cable. Um, Ross, give me some facts about stranded cable. <laughs> so the cable is more flexible and it's, um, can, it's more durable. So it can withstand more pulling and it doesn't have the risk of snapping much like solid core cable does. And therefore reduces the amount of faults that can occur because E cable can easily snap and then you're going to be losing power to half your house or something like that. So Stranded's the far superior option, it's the only cable we use just to make sure that our work is of the highest quality. I'll set them up as you go, you can adjust them as you're there. This here is the device that Ross used to trip the circuit. It's known as an RCD tester, so it tests that a circuit is protected by an RCD by causing it to trip suggesting that it um, is functioning correctly. So Ross plugged this into the power point that he has just tapped into to get power to the above NVR. And from there he knows that it's, the circuit is dead, he can safely work on it, and he's not gonna risk any chance of electrocution or danger to himself or others around him. So it's more just safety for us and to make sure that we are not getting injured on the job and we're going home at the end of the day. Hurry up. <laughs> just setting up the NVR, so just programming it with the date, time, make sure it's all correct. From there we'll start setting up and getting the angles right on the cameras while Ross is waiting for me impatiently. Hurry up James. <laughs> I know, I can, I can see you ageing as you wait. May I'm probably 40. You'll be 40 by the time I'm done. Here I have the Darwell 4 megapixel eyeball camera, which are the cameras we'll be installing today. They're made of a metal construction and are perfect for both internal and external use, featuring an IP67 weatherproof rating, meaning that they can be perfectly mounted outside as well as inside and won't be affected by the harsh element. They feature IR technology, meaning that they both work just as well as day as night, and you won't even tell the difference. At the back here we have the two connection options, both the DC 12 volt and the data cable connection that we'll be using today. So that RJ connection that I showed you previously, we'll just plug straight into here and we're good to go. Checking all the cameras are um, in the right position, so we're just gonna do a little bit of maneuvering to get them into the final locations. And uh, yeah, just making sure they're all set up nice and uh, proper. Alright guys, so it's been James from Brillard. Thank you for following me on this journey. We've had some issues along the way, a bit of humps and bumps, but we've got over them. Me and Ross have smashed out the job and we've just finished setting it up on the client's phone. She's happy as, cameras look great, and can't wait for the next install with this client or any future client. So thank you guys and have a good one. <laughs>